Hey, this is Mike Kosicki, tight end for the Miami Dolphins, and you are listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, October 12th, the Fantasy Footballers. Back with you. Another episode of the show. Mm -hmm. Like we do. Every day. Every day. Twitter at the FF Ballers, the Fantasy is the website. Jason Moore, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? I'm Andy Holloway. Jason, how are you doing this fine oh, Monday morning? I'm doing very well. I feel rejuvenated from the weekend. I'm excited for a uh, hopeful. Tuesday night football. It's gonna it's gonna be a great week. Dot com. <laughs> yeah, we got some good news this morning, right? We we understand that there have been no more positive tests for either the Patriots, All whose right. game okay. was delayed, or I guess postponed to next week, or the Titans. So far, so good. Who we hope are playing on Tuesday, and more than us, the NFL hopes is playing on Tuesday rather than completely turn the schedule upside down. So yeah, that's good news. Mm -hmm. I you know I wake up in the morning. We're on the West Coast. I reach for the phone. <laughs> I say a prayer, <laughs> yep. and we check the news every day. So yeah, lots going on. We've got studs and duds on the show today. The weekly rewind, some injuries, some fun stories from the weekend. Fun for some, not as fun for others. And uh, it's Monday Pun Day, so let's get sophisticated. No. Oh! Mike, I'll let you start this. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I will start this with Chase Yaypool. Okay, <gasps> okay. We've got Dalton Shucks. Mm. <laughs> Smiles Sanders. Oh, oh, gosh, that one was annoying. Wait a minute. Josh Jacobs, who let double yay puns in here, Brooks? It's a, it's a yay. It was me, actually. <laughs> oh, Andy. Clyde Edwards Mehler. Or Clyde Edwards Nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Terry McSnorin. He was the RB22, fellas. DJ Moore TDs, please. Oh, yes, yes. No Alley Cox. Gigant uh, Snore. <laughs> Gigant Snore. CD Bam. Oh, Bam. D DJ Shart. <laughs> DJ Shart. Tyler Higbust. Or Mike, you can take the last one. Oh, too. yes. Finish us up. Zach Hurts. Mm. We should really begin the show with your reflections, your analysis, your unbiased uh, observations on Zach Ertz. Do we have the audio? Because if we could throw to the audio, I mean, I could. I guess I could just repeat it when I say, hey, guys, I think Zach Ertz is washed. The evidence for <laughs> your claim it is mounting. has been further <laughs> uh, added to, what did you say, 15 yards receiving over the past two weeks, yeah. in weeks when there was no Dallas Goddard or receiving options, where somebody named Travis Fulgum yes. is now a dominant wide receiver, and Zach Ertz has all but disappeared. Yeah, when, when you go into... Just like his separation. Like, when you go into the boss's office, and you're like, hey, hey, uh, boss man, I'm looking for a raise. You know, I'd really love to secure yeah, my Bro place Yeah, Brooks on does that team. every almost every week. And, and they're like, okay... You know, show show us your worth to the team, and he's like, "Okay, Mister Boss, don't worry, I'll, I'll I'll show you my worth to this team." There are two options, Mike. There is option one: <laughs> you're right, and Zach Ertz is not the same player anymore. Right. Based on what I mean, I, I was watching with you. You you have an attention to detail because he's been your starting tight end in uh, our league of record. The other option is that. It's a Nodell Beckham Jr. situation from last year. It could where be. Where there's some sort of injury. that There are no other options. There's yes. no option to say Zach Ertz is elite and Carson Wentz is missing him. Yeah, the, the, the separation, it's gone currently. And then you had the, uh, the play where he just... Uh, Zach Ertz is a big dude. He is a big, strong dude. And then someone who looked to be 50 pounds lighter than him brought him down on the one-yard line, and it was Zach Ertz last year or two years ago. Zach Ertz easily scores a touchdown, 
and he just got taken down like a like a pillar full of feathers. Yeah. So I I will give him the benefit of the doubt. Something may be going on that we aren't aware now. of. What do you uh, as a fantasy manager? Yeah. You, nothing. If uh, and this was the the regret. I woke up. I looked in the mirror and I said, I knew I should have tried to trade him last week, but his name was Zach Ertz, and I felt like I was on this island of I need to bail out on Zach Ertz. I got in, and everyone's like, No, we got. Let's give Zach Ertz some more time. And now it's now it's done. No one will trade me for Zach Ertz. That is accurate. <laughs> I looked at your team last week and I thought to myself, You've got Zach Ertz. I might go make a deal. And then I went and I looked at our rosters and I went. What if he's washed? He might be. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to hold the bag. So I didn't offer you anything because I think it it really hasn't looked good. And all you could do is if you have Zach Ertz at this point, all hope. you can do is wait. I mean, you could bench him and roster two tight ends, but no one, no one is going to trade for Zach Ertz right now and give you anything of uh, value. He'll get a Jimmy Graham touchdown here yes. soon, and then you trade him. Yes. Yeah. There are a few players in the. Probably should trade him this week after a touchdown category. Let's get into the rewind. Weekly rewind. All right, the Bills Titans game. It is scheduled for Tuesday at seven Eastern. It is still scheduled for Tuesday at seven Eastern. The Titans had another positive test on Sunday morning. It was from a staff member that had not been in the facility for the last two weeks, so they are hopeful. This is why the NFL hasn't instantaneously just canceled this game the way they did the Patriots game. Uh, there are a bunch of ramifications from the Patriots Broncos having to take a week five bye. The message is check your schedule. Mm -hmm. Keep pay attention. Don't pretend that it's all the same. I would add don't you 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 can't really plan ahead for your bye weeks. The, the you know what I mean? If you're looking and you're like, oh these players are on point. bye in week nine, I need to make this roster move or, you, you don't know. The bye weeks are going to be utilized for schedule changes and it, even teams that ha are not affected or have no COVID results on that team are going to be affected scheduling wise. Yeah, for instance, the Chargers who originally had a week ten bye, they now have a week six bye. So there are adjustments. That's a good point. You just we don't pay a lot of attention to bye weeks in general. The, if you listen to us before the season, it's not a huge impact to the way we draft because we know that we are navigating these rosters. There are players like Zach Ertz and others that bust and move out of your lineup. So uh, continue to not pay much yeah, attention to this. This year is a survival of the fittest. You've got to make do. Uh, I, my personal team in League of Record is just, oh, man, it's not been fun. But uh, this this is, you know, this is what you gotta struggle through. And on that note, the the Megala Bowl. So we we've we've talked about in our home leagues. We're making this thing with these Tuesday night games where you can roster a replacement. You announce who it's gonna be. Um, for instance, if if the the Tuesday night game doesn't happen, I've announced that Jared Goff on my bench will be my starter over Josh Allen. So I, I would I would get him. And I know we've had a lot of people in the Megala Bowl reach out and say, mm -hmm. okay, well you know what what are we doing there? That's a lot of work on a commissioner for updating 11 other teams. There are 7,000 teams. The Megala Bowl is a slugfest. This is a this is a prove your worth. You're going to have to deal with all of these things. Play your best roster, make your best decisions and 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 guesses and go to work. That's that's it. I mean, the message here is shoot your shot. Shoot your shot. Call Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not how we would want it to be for anybody this whole covid uh, enigma year mm -hmm. but it is what it is in the in the megalobol like you said it's it's over 8000 teams actually and Ooh. it's and we have one main commissioner kind of administrating bad situations in that league it's just impossible for him to get through it all yeah so no commission changes just start who you think has the best chance of scoring the most points this week i have not been uh i mean injuries happen all the time in the nfl mm. But the Dak Prescott injury specifically this past weekend was one of the worst that I can remember when you factor everything together. Uh, carted off the field, a compound fracture of his ankle, a dislocation, and an instant surgery last night, which went well. Thoughts and prayers with Dak. Yeah, it was so it was sad. Wild. Uh, so yesterday, Andy and I were here at the studio, and we had – we had our own slugfest going on. We were matched up just coincidentally in our league of record and our dynasty league. So we were going back and forth. It was it was a super fun day. And the Dak Prescott injury happens. We're like, wait, what happened? Oh, and then the air 
of the the room just completely went out, and it was like, man, fantasy football is this is, <laughs> this, this feels kind of weird right now. But just like football, you know, next man up, Andy Dalton is now the starting quarterback. Uh, it, it sounds like for Dak, he will be ready to go. So he, like this is, I know the discussions online are. The long-term contract for Dak. He was playing under the franchise tag. He only had the one year of guaranteed money. Dak should be back, and he should still receive the money that he is truly deserved as a franchise quarterback. If they're confident of the return, Mike, I was telling you yesterday, I wish Jerry right. Jones would give him it tomorrow. I wish that was the uh, motivation for the rehab on the way back. But like you said, it's a lot of money, too, and it's, you got to know a player is going to be okay. Yep. Uh, but let's talk about the fantasy fallout of that situation sure. because there are injuries every week, and obviously Dak is high profile, but also has implications on CD Lamb and Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup, and I think Dalton Schultz. You know, it, yeah. it seemed like he was a pickup last week that you could throw into your lineup. He has one catch this week, and now you have Andy Dalton moving forward. Uh, he doesn't seem to be the player that I would go pivot to if I had a Zach Ertz. No, the way the way that I see it is it it takes all of these wide receiver uh, receiving options and moves them down to seventy five percent of what they were. Now, seventy five percent of what they were is still good. Uh, Amari Cooper and and uh, Michael Gallup and Ceedee Lamb will be decent players. Dalton Schultz probably not worth it now. The other three I think will take a hit, but I also think Andy Dalton himself is going to be seventy five percent of Dak, and that is really good. Uh, yeah. as far as someone on the waivers. So it's, it, you know, we'll talk about it more in depth tomorrow, but I think all three wide receivers take a hit across the board. All right. This was one aspect of our slugfest that Mike and I were having. Uh, Dalvin Cook mm. left week five against the Seahawks last night with a groin injury. It really seemed like there was no way they could stop him in this game. And Dalvin Cook was on his way to having – like a a season performance uh, against the Seahawks. They could not stop the run, and that was evidenced yet further. Alexander Madison, the backup for Minnesota, came in, put up, put up a hundo on them as well. Dalvin Cook, had he not left with a groin injury, man, what could have been? Unfortunate. Yeah, so it, it, he'll have an MRI today. We don't know how long he'll be out. I assume probably at least a week. At least. And uh, he did come back out on the sidelines. Seemed like he wanted to give it a go. Realized he couldn't. Well, he went out back on the field. One oh, snap. he did? Yeah, he took one snap. It was a passing play, and then he tapped out. He said, no, this is that not is, a good idea. That is encouraging to me from the perspective that if you get that, to that point, he wasn't grimacing in pain in the locker room. He was trying to go back out there. Maybe it'll be a shorter-term injury. I will remind people, though, with Madison uh, just carving up the Seahawks defense, it reminds me a little bit of what Dearness Johnson did the week before against the Cowboys uh, alongside Kareem Hunt after the injury. Let's just remember that the the Seahawks are the defense here. Well, this, so. this, But the Seahawks coming into the game were ranked very highly against running backs, but this, it was, Not by my eyeballs last well, night, I'll my, tell you that. I know that, but this is a, a situation of perhaps the pass defense was just so horrendous that it it the numbers were a bit of a liar. We didn't get to see Madison when Cook was injured last year. Right. We saw Mike Boone, a uh, little bit of C.J. Ham mixed in. I mean, Madison is Madison's a very good player, and he will be a three-down running back. He is going to be – he's the top ad of the week for tomorrow's waiver show. Hey. Spoiler, <laughs> you got to tune in, you know? Yeah, yeah, and I think it might depend a little bit on what your team needs tomorrow. But Deontay Johnson exited early with a back injury, paving the way for the Chase Claypool <clears throat> plays against me in a dynasty league. Mike started him, I don't know why, and Maple it Maple uh I started him uh, really out of necessity. It is a two-flex dynasty league, and my team is just ravaged with injuries. And Chase Claypool was a dart throw, which, by the way, a dart throw that was highlighted in our DFS pass. And uh, we got word uh, a listener placed fifth in the Millie Maker. Whoa. Using uh, listening to the DFS podcast hosted by Matthew Betts and Kyle the Borgogan Borgononi. And so this listener came away with a cool bit of Some quiche. Cash. Yeah, Mike, the line between necessity and genius is very fine. It is very, very fine. You look thin, like a yeah. genius. Yeah, uh, the dart throw article also highlighted the number one quarterback on the week, which was Derek Carr. Mm -hmm. I guess we should have sent in the car. DFSPass.com. 
Uh, DJ Chark exited uh, with an ankle injury. Yeah, I mean, he was... Second injury of the year for Chark. Yeah, it's rough. This is turning into an a up-and-down season here for DJ Chark. He was really doing very little before the injury. So if, when you're looking at a stat line, don't try and take solace in the injury of saying, well, he could have had a game. No, he was... He was a bit hobbled. Uh, Kareem Hunt did have some cramps at the end of the game. Dearness Johnson's eight carries came during that time, or six yeah. of the eight. He was not involved in no. this offense. It was all Kareem. Uh, if there were player props on hamstring injuries, these next two injuries would be uh, yep. who I'd bet on. A.J. Green, Sammy Watkins, both it's me. suffered a hamstring injury mm. uh, five years ago and also four years ago and three yeah. years ago and two years ago and this weekend. Mm -hmm. Um. Kyle Allen suffered an arm injury. This was a feel-good part of the day. Alex Smith took his first snaps. Everybody was terrified on earth. But um, Kyle Allen is going to remain the starter against the Giants. He is. And Alex Smith, it was you were, It was a feel-good story. It was, it was a inc pretty incredible moment to see Alex Smith come back. If you followed the story at all, if you watched the documentary – unbelievable what Alex Smith has been able to accomplish with willpower with modern medicine the dude gave Aaron Donald a piggyback ride I don't I don't know if people saw that happen it's like congratulations to Alex Smith but Kyle Allen is still the starter yeah if I was coming back I would probably not choose the Aaron Donald experience mm -hmm. on the way back in but um props to Alex Smith mm -hmm. and then uh we have another firing Dan Quinn uh, is gone as the head yeah. coach of the Atlanta Falcons. Raheem Morris, the interim head coach. The Dan Quinn era is over, and uh, the Adam Gase era continues. Of course it does. <laughs> Michael Thomas, this was a shock, a surprise. We thought he might miss the game. Yeah, I totally called this one, fellas. But not for disciplinary <laughs> reasons. Uh, he he had an altercation. He punched a teammate at practice through the weekend. Come and on, man. Um, yeah, for disciplinary yes. reasons. That's why he missed. Not for injury reasons. You can't be punching people. Come on. Yeah. And if you're going to send a message, you might as well do it when he could use an extra week off of, for an injury. Well, that tomato, tomato. Uh, Jared Cook is expected to play tonight. This was on, uh, on the fence, but he's going to play. And we'll see what he can do. And before we move into this week's Stud Muffins, want to thank today's sponsor, oh, oh, Foot Clan. It's Omaha Steaks, baby. Oh, yeah. Longtime supporter of this show, longtime supporter of uh, my mouth, because I love me some Omaha Steaks. You Come on, you know this. You know oh, that we're man. grilling all the time. We're so good. The burgers are absolutely incredible from Omaha Steaks, and right now you can get a gourmet assortment of best sellers with an exclusive offer just for our listeners, go to omahasteaks.com. You enter the code FOOTBALLERS into the search bar. And for this week, this week, Funkland, Omaha Steaks is going to add two pounds of premium ground beef for free with your order plus free shipping. Is that a hashtag bonus beef? Uh, that that oh. would be called the bonus beef. Bonus. Uh, it, look, you get the... The, the Butcher's Best Sellers Package, that includes the famous bacon-wrapped filet mignon. <laughs> Fellas, uh, we might have to cut the show short. I'm cause, starving. Because now I'm getting hungry. Go to omahasteaks.com. Enter footballers in the search bar for exclusive offers not available anywhere else. Don't forget when you order today, Omaha Steaks will uh, add two pounds of premium ground beef and free shipping. Omaha Steaks, Steaks has been bringing people together for over 100 years. Enjoy family. Enjoy friends. Enjoy the best steak of your life. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. All right, let's start at the quarterback position. Let's reflect on some of these big-time performances this weekend. Patrick Mahomes mm -hmm. had a great game, had two touchdowns, called back in this game on penalty, a 75,000-yard bomb to Tyreek Hill. Yes. Called back on a penalty, and also a Clyde Edwards-Alaire touchdown. And that one hurt me personally. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I know in the Monday Punday, uh, you kind of uh, reacted to mm -hmm. Clyde being included. I know you're very sensitive about I that. I am very sensitive, yes. Um, he, was, uh, he did hit double digits in most league formats, but people want more, Mike. And that's why, his, I, that's yeah, why there I were too it. many Clyde Edwards-Alaire puns showing I, up. I, I understand. But to the point of what you said last week, he did score. Yes. It just didn't count. 
<laughs> That's the worst kind of score. And you were very disappointed. <laughs> but Patrick Mahomes, they lost. I mean, this was the first time they lost in almost 365 days. It was also the first time that Patrick Mahomes has ever lost by more than seven points. That's great, including playoffs. He's very good at football. Impressive win. For yeah. Oh, incredibly impressive yeah. win. Yes. And they've had more than one. This is their second really, really impressive win. One of their losses against the Patriots was on a short week. They had the, the week where Jacobs and uh, Waller, Waller were kind of yeah, banged yeah. up. I think this is a team that is going to surprise. And, and I'm curious if it's, it, speaking of the Raiders, if they're one of those teams that you see every year, there's, there's you know, one or two teams that will just go out and put up a turd and go out and be amazing. And you just never know which version of the team you're getting. So sure. I'm not sure if it was health in a short week and the Raiders are just actually pretty good or if this is a, a streaky team. Henry Ruggs helps a lot. Henry Ruggs is a very, very big difference. You look at the, the production of Derek Carr, his willingness to go downfield in the few games we have seen with Ruggs. It's, it is night and day. Yeah, Derek Carr was the number one overall uh fantasy quarterback this week at least in our league format send in the car send in the car 347 and three and it was it, we said it on the show on friday henry ruggs coming back the way that he changes the entire offense look what you brought up jason about is this a team that lays a turd the answer is yes in part because of Derek carr and in part because you can scheme away the underneath with Derek carr if you don't have henry ruggs over the top or nelson aguilar who's flashed now this year it changes their entire offense. But being able to pound the ball with Jacobs, take deep shots with Ruggs, and improving on defense seems to make them uh, a better team this year. Mm -hmm. Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray keeps getting it done, 380 uh, against the Jets. Has Dallas and Seattle the next two weeks. He could end up pushing for the number one overall fantasy spot at quarterback with that, with that gone and those two matchups. He could. Deshaun Watson hey, finally, finally had a game. Welcome in, is. Deshaun. Yeah. He was freed. <laughs> No Bill O'Brien's like, go have fun. Go play football. And also, you have this guy on your team named Brandon Cooks who's really fast. He's not retired. Go throw him the ball a lot. <laughs> yeah, thoughts on the retirement of Brandon Cooks. His thoughts were, no, I'm not. Yeah, he was upset. Yeah. We, Darren, moti we motivated Darren Fells him. with a big touchdown. Uh, but Deshaun Watson, this was the make-or-break game for him. We said that on the show last week, too. If he doesn't put up a game against Jacksonville, you start looking at pivoting more often from Deshaun Watson. It's Tennessee Green Bay, though. A couple tough matchups in the next couple weeks. Russell Wilson uh, was not having a game, but then had a game. He had a really poor game that was great for fantasy. Congratulations if yeah. you have Russell Wilson. Also great for the NFL. He won the game because if you put the ball in his hands with the chance to win at the end with over a minute left to go, uh, he's going to do it every time. Ryan Fitzpatrick, another great fantasy week for Fitzpatrick. This was an impressive win for Miami over San Francisco. Um, they got Jimmy Garoppolo benched. <laughs> they yeah. beat the they, snot out of him. The Miami Dolphins sent the starting quarterback for the 49ers to the bench. The Dolphins are not the Jets or the Giants. <laughs> I mean, it's, no. And that should be like – They're you, from Miami. You. That's a solid point, Jason. But you had traditionally put those bottom dwelling teams into a certain category. The matchup against Miami is not the same. Seattle and Miami had a competitive game. Miami just beat the crap out of the 49ers, and the 49ers mopped the floor with the Giants and Jets being. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, Jared Goff, uh, he had a game. Oh, yes. Uh, Nice to see mm -hmm. the bounce back. Uh, Big Ben. Big Ben had a game, too. One of the streaming candidates for last week. 27 for 34. Three touchdowns. He owes somebody a bouquet of edible arrangements. You're talking about Mr. Chase Claypool? Yes, I am. I, I will say this. With that Chase Claypool breakout, I was thinking about this. I don't know the status of Deontay Johnson's back injury. Sure. But if De uh, Deontay Johnson's looked great, and I assume he would have had a phenomenal game if he didn't exit with injury. But Claypool is clearly a, uh, a, a very good dominant weapon that can be used here. And if they get all three of these players, you know, with Juju and Deontay Johnson and Claypool, Big Ben is, is going to have a good fantasy season rest of season if those three guys are out there healthy. Yeah, that was one of the things we were saying in the office yesterday. The ceiling for Big Ben changes with the emergence of an alpha like Claypool. He is mm -hmm. 
very much like the impact DK Metcalf has had on Seattle, where you have a guy. Look, I I respect and love Tyler Lockett for what he is. He is not the size of DK Metcalf. Sure. And when you have a player and or Chase Claypool, and Claypool just manhandles people, it raises the touchdown ceiling for Big Ben. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Unstoppable Mike Davis. Oh, oh was man. The, was this the farewell party? I don't know. What do you I guys think? So. Do you think CMC is on his way back? I think he is. Uh, the, I mean, I think that Christian McCaffrey is back. And when once Christian McCaffrey is back, he is the dude. Oh yeah, moving forward. But if it does, the team look at Mike Davis and say, Christian, it, if you're at eighty five percent, take it easy, man. We can get you back to a hundred. We're okay here with with Mike Davis until you are ready to go. Yeah, I was thinking what what it would be like to be this human being. You are dominating, Mike Davis. Mike yeah. Davis, you're Mike. You are dominating in the NFL. You are legit great, not good. And whenever Christian McCaffrey comes back, it's gonna be like, all right, you uh, go go uh, warm the bench. Yeah, and and it, and it will be that. It will be. Yeah. yeah, and it just shows how good Christian McCaffrey would have been over these three games. We had wondered if he would be the same player with this offense and this offense is playing well nine receptions from the running back position again for Mike Davis he is tied for the league lead at the running back position that's what you wanted to hear about for Christian mm -hmm. well, I mean he's the, he's currently the running back nine on the season whew. he didn't start two of the games hopefully he he's getting get, get a bag from somebody yeah I mean it, it's great that they actually had somebody on the depth chart this time yeah I mean Christian McCaffrey in previous years, there was nobody. Sure. Zeke, nice game for Zeke. Does Zeke take more of a responsibility for this offense at this point? Yes, he will. And he's going to smash Arizona next week. Yep. Uh, Todd Gurley deserves uh, our respect. I mean, this has been a solid, solid year for Gurley. He it had has. another great week, 14 for 121 and 1. Uh, had five targets in this one. And at this point in time, are you trading high on Gurley? Are you holding him? I mean, the touchdowns, I doubt they continue at this pace, but what are you doing with him? I mean, I think if you can trade high um, and capitalize on the name and the fact that, I mean, he's, you know, Todd Gurley's a, a top 10 running back right now. He's scored more fantasy points than Joe Mixon, than Clyde Edwards-Alaire, than Jonathan Taylor. Um, you might be able to really get something great for him. What about it, those three players? Yeah, I would trade him yeah, for any one of those that. three players. If you could trade him straight up for those guys, done deal. Miles Sanders, I would include in that. Um, I the, Gurley's fantasy production has been a little bit too touchdown dependent to think that it's going to be this consistent the rest of the season. Brand new head coach. We'll see what happens. Miles Sanders. Now, Mike and I, we were in our League of Record battle, and uh, – Look, you weren't feeling great about Miles Sanders starting no. starting this week against Pittsburgh, right? No, it was it was an absolute terrible matchup on Sunday Live. I was expressing my like my my concerns, my worry for Miles Sanders, and then boom, seventy four yard touchdown run for Miles Sanders, looking like an absolute savage. You know what Just, that feels like, Mike, when what? when you know that your opponent has Miles Sanders against the vaunted Pittsburgh defense, mm. and he's doing nothing. In fact. He did. Uh, he had ten other carries in the game, other than his seventy-four yard touchdown run. He averaged point six yards per carry on those. <laughs> yeah. So seventy-four yard touchdown run. Finished the game with eighty yards on the ground, but he did have the two touchdowns. So look, he dominated for fantasy purposes. <laughs> it was. It turned into a great play. But that was if if <laughs> don't the, be the process was correct, saying be scared yes. to start him. Don't be fooled going forward that the Steelers run defense is soft or, you know, it, right. They they are they are elite. There was one play on the season that that did not but work. But this out. will disrupt the analytics because he scored another touchdown, which mm -hmm. means the fantasy points given up to the running back position for the Steelers this week was awful. Uh -huh. Yes. And not true of the circumstances really. Although right. At least we know they can give up a 74-yard run. Josh Jacobs, another great game from Jacobs. Mm -hmm. This was so funny because we talked about how Jacobs really, only, so far in his short career, his good games come in wins. I mean, it, you know, his multi-touchdown games, they come in wins. This is a game where they're uh, on the road, heavily underdog. This isn't going to be a good game for Jacobs. 
But then it turns out that the Raiders yeah. put up 40 and win the game. And it's a great game for Jacobs. He looks like it. we were right in the sense that in games that the Raiders win, <laughs> Jacobs is very good. We were just wrong that they, I, I mean, what would you have put the odds that the Raiders win this game? Very 10, low. 10%? Yeah, it didn't look like it was going to happen, and neither did Jacob's good game until they started getting going. Mm -hmm. He's the RB six on the season, but this is why players like Mixon and Jacobs—you just play them every week. You mm -hmm. don't, you don't uh, try to chase other points elsewhere. You just play your studs. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of Chase, Chase Edmonds, mm. three for thirty-six and a touchdown on the ground, six targets again, five for fifty-six through the air. Dallas, Seattle, those good matchups. But Kenyon Drake, Kenyon Drake was 18 for 60 and one. Um, I don't know where he would live in today's show. I guess he would live further on the good than bad. But I, I will tell you, I watched every one of those 18 carries. I was very uh, discouraged with what I saw. A player running slowly, laterally. He honestly looked like David Johnson in Arizona last year. It was great that he got into the end zone. If it's me, I'm trying as hard as I can to cash in on Kenyon Drake this week. What do you guys think? I would trade him. Yeah, I, I don't blame you cashing in on him. And I I think that if you can sell high, the the routes run between Kenyon Drake and Chase Edmonds changed this week. The passing game involvement, like if you look at the carries, this Chase Edmonds is is not involved. He, he you know he comes in, has a great surprise mm -hmm. touchdown run. But carry count, it's all it's all Drake. And I don't think that's going away, even with the inefficiencies of Drake. But what we've really been missing is the involvement in the passing game for Drake. And we, th we said there was going to be change this week. Either he they're going to get him more involved or Chase is going to be more involved. And Chase was more involved. So to your point, Andy, I think, yeah, you can – you can try to capitalize if you're afraid that it's going to be this way for the rest of the season. Um, I I also think he is getting a ton of volume, and for fantasy, that's what matters the most at the end of the day. Even if you're inefficient, you fall into the end zone and you have a decent game. And it's so called the David Montgomery approach that I've been taking. <laughs> yeah, it, the for Drake, it's if you can trade high, I would do it. It you don't have, you're not trying to get rid of Kenny Drake for free because he he's still getting the volume but I do believe that this game signifies a drastic change in the ceiling for Kenyon Drake seeing the six targets for Edmonds and the one for Drake I just yep. I just want to remember because there's there are not many people that get the amount of workload that Drake has been getting like there's sure. you know you can count them on both your hands and that's it and so getting out is a little worrisome in the sense that you know last year we saw this with Joe Mixon right he was three yards of carry through the first half of the season inefficient yeah, and I, I don't want to harp on my this is just opinions right sure but I do want to stress the fact that Kenyon Drake looks terrible running the football this is not a player that looks anything like last year Joe Mixon watching him at the beginning of the year last year in my opinion was running as hard as he ever had run and it came to fruition later I, if I were planting my flag, I'd be planting my flag on disappointment. And if he didn't fall into the end zone yesterday, we would have been telling you to get out. This is just my opinion. Sure. I, I, I understand the volume argument. I just saw a really, really bad player. I don't know what happened. We said he gained weight. Uh, there's a lot of talk about, I saw on Twitter, a lot of talk about the boot. Mm -hmm. There could be an injury here. There's got to be something that happened because he doesn't look nearly as explosive as last year. And they're not using him in the passing game, which makes no sense if he's the same player. Yeah. Miles Gaskin. Oh, the gas man. Jordan Howard was a healthy scratch. Yes, and that turned into a goal line yes. carry for Miles Gaskin. The, this is why I kept bringing the name up. I mean, you, you, Jason, the volume of Kenyon Drake. You could not deny the volume of Miles Gaskin over the first couple of weeks. It was you're never like, yeah, I'm getting Miles Gaskin seventh round pick, and he's going to turn into a star for my fantasy team. But he could be a he he could be a solid running it's back. Philip Lindsay year for Miles Gaskin. It yeah, could be the the problem with Gaskin, and what was said is he's getting volume. He'll have a great floor. He'll get you ten yeah. points. But when you get down around that oh, goal line, he has no chance of scoring a touchdown because it's Howard and Howard being a healthy healthy scratch that changes everything. Now yes. you have a high floor with touchdown upside. Devonta Freeman had seventeen carries in this game against Dallas. He also scored. Mm -hmm. Uh. I told you last Thursday I was going to play him over McCole Hardman. And it worked out. And, uh, look, it, 
It's a volume play. I don't think he looks that bad. I really don't. He, he does. He looks okay. Yeah. Uh, Chase Claypool. <laughs> oh man. Mapletron. Ele- Eleven targets. <laughs> seven for one. Ten and three. Had a rushing touchdown. Uh, he ran only twenty three routes, which is just incredible. This reminds me of the. Uh, was it Marvin Jones in Cincinnati when he had one of those three touchdown yeah, yeah, games? Yeah. And he ran almost no routes over the course of the game. Now this is I mean, he was more involved than Marvin Jones was. But this everything came together for Chase Claypool this week in a breakout performance. And I if you've listened to the show through the offseason, you know that I was amongst those on the very front of the of the Claypool bandwagon. Love the guy's uh opportunity, the draft capital, the athletic profile of Chase Claypool and the Steelers hit rate with wide receivers it was you get this guy in your rookie drafts because he has the makeup to eventually become a number one now James Washington st- still had a much higher uh route rate 90 percent compared to Chase Claypool at 67 percent so I, I this is a a moment of celebration and and a party for Chase Claypool but you need to have at least some caution here if, if you're going to go all in on Chase Claypool, know that he this could be like the game for the season. You would expect, you would hope that Chase Claypool has proven his worth to the team, that they're going to get him far more involved, but that is not a guarantee. I completely agree, and we have to remember Deontay Johnson got knocked out of this game mm-hmm. to, yes. at the beginning. So uh, Deontay Johnson, Juju, James Washington, Claypool, Ebron, Connor, there are multiple weapons here. But long-term, man, you should be excited for Claypool. I agree. And we remember Juju, the contract. Right. Like yeah, oh. this is He's not coming back no, for the money Juju's that he gone. wants. Yep. Uh, Travis Fulgham. Oh, dominant. <laughs> 13 targets, 10 for 152 and 1. Unbelievable, you, you, man. You weren't joking. He was actually dominant. He was. Against Pittsburgh. He had six total targets in his career coming into this game. Yeah, this would be the Eagles wide receiver. Brooks wants us to remind you. <laughs> I mean, it's, dude, good for you, man. Yeah, this, this yeah. is awesome. Yeah, I, you know, what Zach Ertz cannot do, Fulgham can. Brandon well, Cooks. Well, because Zach Ertz is taking all the coverage because he, he runs these really slow, uncrisp routes. But he's still got the name on in the back. So yeah, everyone covers they're like, him. oh, we got to take out the number one option. <laughs> yeah, this was uh, honestly a pretty impressive Fool performance. You. Like, Wentz getting it done against Pittsburgh, the sure. game being competitive. Yep. Obviously, at the end, it, it fell apart. Um, Brandon Cook's unretired. He decided to <laughs> what, check himself out of the retirement facility mm-hmm. without permission. Oh, and his, um, a good luck chasing these points. Yeah, I mean, his of all the of all the retirements were. You know, he's he's young. He's proven. Uh, there's so much change happening for the Texans. You're right, Andy, in the sense that this is chasing points. He's going to be a high volatility player that's not consistent but I don't think but he can this still is, do it now yeah I don't think this is his last good game or you know an outlier that's not gonna happen a couple times through the year it's just really when you're playing that Will Fuller Brandon Cooks flip of the coin it's it's gonna be gross and and it the can truth land, is it can land on Cooks you're going to need to start those players every single week if you want the chance of hitting those big games, these are these are great best ball players. And you know, I I uh, yesterday morning I helped my son set his lineup in our family league. He's playing for the first time, and I was like, "Oh, you got to take Brandon Cooks out of your lineup." Oh no! <laughs> then we get alerts all day. <laughs> big play, Brandon Why, Cooks. <laughs> look, the disparity is highlighted in the last two games. He played ninety four percent of snaps last week against a bad Minnesota secondary. He had three targets, no catches. This week against Jacksonville, 12 targets, 8 catches. It was a completely different ball game. Now, I want to be clear, though. Will Fuller still had a great game. Will Fuller still had a great fantasy week, which is, uh, other than the week he was injured, he's been consistent each and every week. So this the, the hope the hope here is not in Brandon Cooks and not in Will Fuller. It's in Deshaun Watson. It's in the fact that the, the offensive guy running the show is gone. And there's a change in mentality, a change in what they might want to do and unleash Deshaun Watson, and that this could become a new normal. That is the hope that we're, you know, because we do have to recognize Bill O'Brien is gone and Deshaun Watson went off. If Deshaun Watson goes off, his receivers are going to be good. Completely. Yeah. Adam Thielen is outstanding. Always open. I ne- I always wonder how he can just target him on every play he wants to. And uh, it's because he's always open. He's the Night wide receiver. Crawler. One. 
Is he really? Wow. Unless Brooks is lying to me. I'm on it. I wouldn't do that to you. Wow. He is uh, the wide receiver. The last, he is. He has three top five finishes in five games this year. If you look at his bad game, it came against the very uh, stout Colts defense. But uh, Atlanta next week, is that going to stand in his way from a uh, continuing the streak? No, he's he's been great. He's always been a, a underrated great wide receiver. Yeah, and uh, you know as long as Kurt Cousins shows up, Thielen shows up, Metcalf. He's good. He is incredible. And um, if you look at his games this year, he's got, I think, four catches and f like four out of five of them. He's he's above 90 yards in every game. He has 300-yard games, caught two touchdowns last night, five touchdowns in five games. He is maturing into the alpha. He is. Uh, that you look at for future, like Dynasty. I saw J.J. Zach uh, Zacharyson. Zacharyson talk about this. He just tweeted it boldly. DK Metcalf, the dynasty number one pick. Hmm. Do you agree with that? He's attached to Russell for the next ten years of his career. I mean, I I would probably take Tyreek Hill and maybe De maybe Devonte Adams, probably Devonte Adams. But I mean, he's, he's in, in the conversation for sure. I think he's worthy of it. Only you know, does Devonte Adams have two years with? Rodgers? I don't, don't know. know. It's just interesting when you're 22 and yes. you're dominating in your second season. 22.5 um, yards per reception. My son was watching this game. He's got DK Metcalf. He, so he's just a monster fan. And uh, so he's calling for him to be targeted on every single yeah, play. Yeah. But it feels like a player you can target on every single play because he's too big. Mm -hmm. To uh, you, you lose the risk of throwing an interception when he can out jump you or push you to the ground as but, a DB. So Metcalf won. Chase Claypool, too? <laughs> <laughs> Not sure about that. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, great game. Six for 131 and one. He's the wide receiver four on the season. And, and, I, and I just did the math here uh, it, on that. The drive where he scored the touchdown, in two receptions he had 82 of his yards. So yeah. like on that drive, they were the Cardinals were buried. And two just monster passes to DeAndre Hopkins. I was actually really Wild. happy to see the downfield targets for Hopkins on both those throws because sure. he had been a PPR underneath kind of player. So it was nice to see him get downfield targets. Jason, you've got Jamison Crowder in oh. our league of record. Oh, man. Jamison Crowder. I love it. I love him. He's great. All he's done so far is had three great games. He missed two to injury, and outside of that, he has yet to have a game under 100 yards. Um, a, a game under double digit targets. What more do you want than sure. someone who's just? I mean, he was the wide receiver eight, the wide receiver twenty, the wide receiver seven in his three games played. It's not going to stay there because he's already got two touchdowns in three games, and he's not a. I don't think the scores are going to be coming that way. But if you're telling me ten targets, hundred yards, uh, yes, please buy, sell, hold, hold, hold. I don't think you want to buy. You're going to have to pay up and. Maybe. I don't know. If you can get him cheap, cheaper than than you should, then yeah, absolutely. I'm get curious him. how many of the games came on people's benches because of perception, name, sure. Joe Flack. I mean, look, he's had two great games before this week. Yeah. You, Jason, you started him, but you've kind of been backed into I, it. I've been backed into starting Jamison Crowder both the last <laughs> two weeks. Uh, Delightfully. Thanks. Yes. It's been, it's been great. All right. Henry Ruggs had two for 118 and one. One touch guy. I mean, he's going to yep. be somebody that you can throw out there and, like, I would say greater sign McCall Hardman because he's more important to the offense. He's going to be running more routes than Hardman, but same type of fantasy yep. situation. But he's on a bye this week. Are you willing to drop him? I am. Oh, absolutely not. No, no way. You no, wouldn't. no. Henry Ruggs is a uh, just as viable of a pickup to me as Chase Claypool is. Through a bye. Where you can't play, you're oh, gonna absolutely. have to. Okay. Yeah, I think he's somebody that you're gonna want on your roster. Someone hasn't been hit as hard by COVID <laughs> over here. I'm like, my bench spots are worth gold right now. Yeah, I mean, if you oh. if you're in a position where you can't roster a bye week player, then you have to drop him. But I think he is is worthy of of uh, rostering. Thought he was last week. Preston Williams, five Great. targets, four for one hundred six and one. Nice to see him have a game. Calvin Ridley, 10 targets, 8 for 136. DJ Moore, Mike, he finally got into the end zone. He, he finally did it. Yeah, but let's look at this disparity here. Five targets for DJ Moore, 13 targets for Robbie Anderson. 
Anderson with eight and one twelve again. We know who the favorite receiver is for Teddy Bridgewater. Chicago next week. What do you do with DJ Moore? Uh, DJ Moore is a flex play who you can look at the matchup. So maybe you don't want to play him against Chicago. I don't. I don't blame you. I I have DJ Moore in our league of record, and I will be. You know, I'll, I'll be looking at my bench players. Maybe I have someone who has a more uh, a more preferable matchup, but he is a flex player who he can do this on a on a regular basis. I completely but. agree with you. He's he's a flex player who can do this. He's going to have several more great games because he's an athletic freak yep. who's involved in what looks to be a good offense. And I would sell high. I would sell because he he on the on the back of a good game. With draft capital still, you know, we're only a month into the season where people drafted him high. I would see if you can capitalize and, and upgrade because he's the wide receiver, too, for the team. He has scored in four games over the last two seasons. So if, if there was a time to cash in, you might as well do it now if you're in that camp, if you believe what Jason's Robbie saying. Robbie Anderson is on pace for over 150 targets. Yeah. He's a volume guy, which has never been what and Robbie And a big Anderson play guy. Is. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, yeah, we already knew he had the big play potential. That's why we assumed his role was going to be downfield and, uh, you know, less involved in the volume. But he, so far, I mean, we've got five weeks now where he's the clear number one for Teddy. I will tell you this. I mean, fantasy football, look, we, we look at it all day long every day. We watch every game. The Robbie Anderson situation, as a fantasy football manager of Robbie Anderson in a dynasty league, this has been one of the most surprising things yes. that I've seen happen. When I didn't think I had a player of value in a dynasty league. Then he went to Carolina, and I go, oh, great. Teddy B, DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, Christian McCaffrey. Oh, great. This was not the destination I wanted for Robbie Anderson. And I was wrong. Dead wrong. Uh, Darius Slayton, Jason, you said taking it oh. to 100. He was great. 11 targets, 8 for 129. Had a touchdown call back. Uh, this yeah he did and he would have had an even bigger game so that was great to see see the wide receiver you start in uh, yes New York yeah I mean he's another one of those volatile players but in a good matchup you're gonna I, I think you'll be happy to start Darius Slayton more often than not and then you've got uh, the big boys Kelsey Andrews Waller big tight end weeks that's and that's the order of the season that's the fantastic that's just fantastic. You, I hate this is when, how it's supposed to it's be. It's how it's supposed to be. You drafted them to do this. Good job. Keep it up. Be the first, second, and third tight ends. You guys are great. Uh, well, there's a name missing. Yeah, I mean, Zach Ertz. Uh, Zach Ertz, yeah. Yeah, Zach Ertz is not one of the big names anymore. Uh, Darren Fells, two targets, two for 57 and one. I think Brooks put this in there because I tweeted – Five minutes before the game started, that Darren Fells was going to have a game. Also, fifty-seven and one is a great game for a tight end. Yeah, that's what's shocking. It's a top five game, and he had two, <laughs> two catches. But uh, anybody else you want to talk about in the studs that we missed? Nope. All right, let's move on. Stinkers of the week, presented by Odor Eaters. Jimmy Garoppolo, Matt Ryan, Joe Burrow, Daniel Jones, stink, stink, stunk. Mm. Look, man, Matt Ryan, This I highlighted this on the Sunday Live. I've been down the road with Matt Ryan when Julio Jones is not on the field. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. I, Cal Ridley's excellent. Cal Ridley's incredible. He had a good game. He had a great game. But until I see Matt Ryan can actually play without Julio Jones, no thank you. Nope. Hard pass. I saw so many people. So I couldn't believe how many people were upset they played Joe Burrow. I'm like. Who's who? Why are you? Why were you playing Joe Burrow? Oh, He's a rookie against Baltimore. Nobody recommended to play Joe. But I, like I, hundreds of uh, Twitter comments of like, man, I I knew I shouldn't have, but I did. And it's, it's like it's an Icarus situation here. It you flew too, you flew close. too close to the sun. No, this was uh, the writing was on the wall all week long. This is not the kind of matchup you want for a rookie quarterback, and he was disastrous. Yeah, he's going to be great. He is great. But it's going to take a while. He's a rookie against Baltimore. And play the matchups. Yeah, Daniel Jones. Um, Oof, man. Oof, duh. They The Giants scored 34 points, and Daniel Jones didn't seem to get any of those. Uh, fumbled Oof, again. Duh. Fumbled in four straight games. He loves fumbling. Fumbling is his thing. 
Uh, at Fumble on Twitter is his uh, handle. <laughs> his middle name is F- Daniel Fumble Jones. Yeah. That's not a nickname. That's what his parents gave him. Yeah, his parents probably should not have done that. that I think it set him up for failure or for Fumble. Sometimes Jameis Winston fumbles and calls it a Daniel Jones. <laughs> That's where we're at with Daniel Jones. Yeah, Daniel Fumble Jones. Sorry. Uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire showed up. Uh, it was 10 for 40. I think that was. One of the surprising pieces, the involvement wasn't really there. Eight targets, though. I mean, I, I'm, look, I don't me, feel like we need to do anything with the, Clyde edwards alaire You don't need to apologize for him, and you don't need to pretend it's better than it is. It's just he's going to have good games. I'm still trading for Clyde edwards alaire Lev Bell, 13 for 60. And, we, and one target. One target for Le'Veon Bell. What is happening? Which yeah. was egregious in Mike's mind. I mean, we, we, we knew this already. This isn't shocking that he wasn't good last year with the gay system he wasn't good this year before the injury uh you know he was i thought they would fire him this week if they if he lost and yeah. they didn't uh, they really want that number one pick does your opinion change heavily on love bell if gaze is out the door yeah yeah <laughs> i did watch this game and said to myself man he just he the player that love bell is needs a different system mm-hmm. yeah i totally agree but the fact that that Le'Veon Bell is getting one target is is completely egregious. Yeah, you're wasting the talent. Yeah, you still had nine carries to Frank Gore. Like what are you what are you doing? Nine know. nine too many? James Robinson, uh this uh, yeah. wasn't a great game. Thirteen for forty eight, five for twenty two through the air though, so in PPR you were okay. Stay the course. The volume is there. Yeah, I like the targets. They keep coming. Uh Antonio Gibson. This, this was, was this was so insane and bizarre because so uh, Antonio Gibson, one of his player props out there was an over under of eighteen and a half receiving yards, and it was this is the easiest player prop of smash the over I I think I've ever seen with Kyle Allen coming in. The Antonio Gibson hits twenty four receiving yards in the first quarter, and that's what he ended up with five for twenty four. 11 carries, 27 yards. Uh, I believe the stat was as soon as Alex Smith came in, Antonio Gibson had one touch. Like, I don't know what happened with the game plan when, when Smith was in and not getting Antonio Gibson the ball. But this, you know who he got the ball to, though? McKissick. That's the part that's concerning. It would have been really easy to say the second the Kyle Allen switched to Smith, okay, he just didn't look Gibson's way. But Gibson wasn't on the field. Right. And so it was bewildering. I don't know what happened. Every time I looked up, it was J.D. McKissick getting a target or some involvement in the offense. Yep. Um, I don't I don't know. It was a bad game. I mean, he ends yep. up 11 for 27 with yep. five targets in the first quarter and nothing else. Yeah, it's really obnoxious to see a player on his way to a fantastic game and then just stall out in the first quarter. Jarek McKinnon. Yeah. What? None. I mean, yeah. so let me ask you. Uh, this uh, one carry. Uh, that was shocking to what? me. What? Shocking. He, he only was in on 25% of snaps. Oh, yep. Okay. So he was pretty much just not really a part of this game. Do you throw this game in the garbage? This is a game where you got you got kicked in the teeth by the Dolphins. You bench your quarterback at halftime. You take the L on the chin because that is the way I look at it. Like, I hate this, that he went out and had a bad game. But I'm not going to – like, this game was gone as soon as it started. If if you were tracking the game, it was like halftime was – didn't didn't the Dolphins have more than 30 points? It's like 30 to 7 or it something. Was, it was a dominant performance by the Dolphins. Uh, it, it is really hard to extrapolate any information moving forward. I don't throw the game away. I, I Jerry McKinnon is probably on my bench now. Yeah, I mean, it, this was a game Mostert was coming back in uh, yes. anyways. So I don't throw it all. I mean, you're right. The game script was not one where you were going to see their running offense get going, but that is something that is going to be Mostert-centered, not not McKinnon-centered. So I, I was worried about McKinnon with Mostert coming back to begin with. I am worried moving forward on any type of reliability with McKinnon with Mostert back it's in the fair. game. And you've got Donald next week and then the Patriots. Mm. So a couple weeks of probably benching him and seeing what happens. Right. Mark Ingram, 11 for 57. Yeah, par for the course these days. Well, Dobbins got one carry, looked incredible on the one carry. 
Why isn't he getting more carries? I don't. They're they're giving everyone a chance. Uh, Mari Cooper, Tyler Lockett. Uh, people, I the sentiment I saw most often when I went through all of the puns this morning was frustration with Tyler Lockett because two great games, um, and then not a lot of involvement last night. Well, it 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 got compounded by the fact that both Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf had nothing, nothing going into halftime. I think I, I had messaged our company Slack. Like if, if you had the combination of the two players, it was something like two receptions for 20 yards between the two players. But then DK Metcalf goes out, blows up, ends up having a great game, and Tyler Lockett was left in the dust. Which yeah. I think compounded the perception, but I wouldn't be worried about him. No, I, no, no, I'm, I'm not I, worried. Yeah. Just saying the, the frustration. If for people fantasy. are frustrated or worried, I think you go and, and trade for Tyler Lockett if you could get him cheap. He's, this on, a, is, he's on a buy, it, too. It, it, was a, it was a rainy game, and, and at the end, if you remember, I mean, look, Tyler Lockett dropped the ball. He shouldn't have. He should have caught that right on the one yard line. Might have scored the touchdown for the game winner. And then you're like, oh yeah, he, you know, then he would have been 65 yards and a touchdown. And DK Metcalf doesn't get that last touchdown. Right. Um. He's, you know, this this wasn't a great game for Russell Wilson in general. You you saw the, I mean, that first half just getting sacked like crazy. Um. I'm not worried about him at all. I'll bring up some names. You guys just tell me if you are worried. Terry McLaurin, seven targets, three no. for 26. Quarterback uh, lack of continuity there. Like I said, weird game for Washington with the going from Kyle Allen to the the triumphant return of Alex Smith. Uh, we need to see some normalcy before we react. Tyler Boyd, six targets. This was the Baltimore game, yeah. whatever. Nope. Yeah, but they've got Indy this week. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Boyd was probably – more of the Jameson Crowder contingency plan for people than a plan. Sure. Juju, five targets, four for 28. He's been touchdown dependent. And Deontay Johnson's the number one. Maybe Chase Claypool's the number one if Deontay is going to miss time. But Yeah, I would I would be a little bit more worried about yeah. Juju than the rest of these people that you're talking about. Justin Jefferson, who I thought would have a much better game, yeah. stunk it up. Uh, are you worried about Jefferson? I'm, I'm, I'm not. not. He's no. a rookie. It's, this is going to happen. Debo had eight targets, just two catches. Probably stand by and see what happens at quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. The the, the eight targets is actually nice to see. That's very positive to me. Debo was still not in the consideration to play. He was he was a bench stash. You you saw thirty five percent of the snaps last week. It was okay. Uh, let's let him work his way back from injury. But to come back to eight targets, all right, all right. All right, uh, deciding on certain tight ends for rest of season is something that's kind of important around week four, five, six, mm -hmm. who you can depend on. Uh, we talked about Zach Ertz at the top. I mean, this was terrible. Six targets, one for six. Don't need to talk about him anymore. Um, but, you know, Dalton Schultz, just one catch. Tyler Higby. Higby was two for 12. Uh, Everett was four for 90. Um, not a lot of routes run by either player. What are your thoughts right now? Yeah, this is a they're they're using them to block. Um, I worry about both of these players. We we knew this was a good matchup for tight ends. We said it could be Higby, but it could very easily be Everett. Everett had a great game for a tight end. Ninety yards for a tight mm -hmm. end is fantastic. I'm not super excited about either of these guys. Only one top twenty finish on through five weeks for Higby. Might have to adjust thoughts on him. Dalton mm -hmm. Schultz uh, not confident moving forward. Hayden Hurst that experiment seems to be. Yeah. Look, Hayden Hurst, Russell Gage, uh, Zacchaeus. They, if you don't have Julio, Matt Ryan is like Ridley is okay, but without Julio, you think these other guys step up. You think, okay, this is where Russell Gage is going to be more involved in the offense. I don't. It it doesn't work. It uh, Matt Ryan just isn't as good when Julio's out of the game. Yeah, it's like marked. I mean, like a very obvious difference. All right, we might have to retire him, guys. Moali Cox mm. had only one target, only ran nine routes, and unfortunately, Trey Boo Boo. Yeah. Trey Burton has led the team over the last two weeks in terms of targets and routes run. And Well, Ali Cox is too big to share. And when he's in a three, you know what I mean? Like when he is in a three-headed tight end group, that's, that's un, first of all, unnecessary. You don't need him at all to be out there with any other tight ends. Just get rid of them. But if 
the coach is making the clear wrong decision of having other tight ends other than <laughs> Mo Ali Cox, then I think you, you obviously can't use him for, for fantasy. Can I please say something out loud, Jason, that you will love? Oh, boy, that sounds great. There is no offense I hate watching more this season than the Indianapolis Colts. And why, Andy? <laughs> because Phillip Rivers sucks. He sucks. Every catch, I mean, T.Y. Hilton had his best game of the year, which was still not even double digits in most formats, maybe if you're in PPR. Every catch that T.Y. Hilton made in that game was sliding to the ground to catch the ball before it hit the ground. The running game can't get going. Rivers can't score touchdowns because Rodrigo rocket ship oh, is yeah. the leading scorer in, in, in all of football because all they do is kick field goals. Boom, boom, it is baby. the most boring, hard-to-watch offense in football. Now, they have a defense, and they could make the playoffs and yada, yada, but for fantasy purposes, I I look away. I, I have a, a message. I need to I need to speak directly to Frank Reich right please, now. Please do. I just want to point something out. We're we're silly fantasy football players, fantasy analysts. Yes. You know, living in mom's basement. Yeah. You, you know, just looking at the stats Love are for, it down here. Stats are for nerds. Right. Losers. Week one, Mo Alley Cox was the tight end twenty eight against Jacksonville. That was a loss mm. for the Indianapolis Colts. Okay. Tight end ten. Okay. That's pretty good. They won. All right. Tight end five. They won. Tight end 12, Mo Alley Cox against Chicago. That was another big win. Tied for dead last among fantasy tight ends. A loss to Cleveland. Mm. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> can you, Brooks, can you fax that over to Frank? <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh, think. oh! If you're Frank Reich has a fax machine for sure, probably three of them. Uh, stinkers of the week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. We also want to thank Pristine Auction for once again supporting the show. Uh, they've got these elite auctions every Ooh. month. These are month long auctions that is an exclusive to the higher end items. A Calvin Ridley. Signed Falcons, full size, Matt White, authentic on the field speed helmet. Oh, Dude, that's mercy. Not, that sounds hot. Its current auction bid price is just $100 with 13 days left. Go check it out at pristineauction.com. Make sure you use the code BALLERS when you sign up. That is, it will give you $10 off your first registration. Helps us out. That is it for today. Waiver Wire show tomorrow, a big one. We'll see if Mike walks in with a Chase Claypool jersey or not. I, he's probably on the hunt right now. Pristine auction, so. Stay Take safe. Care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. Foot Clan, do not forget about Omaha Steaks packages, including the Butcher's Best Seller package, which includes the bacon wrapped filet mignon, because you're going to get this is outstanding at omahasteaks.com with the code FOOTBALLERS. This week, two pounds of premium ground beef for free with your order plus free shipping. Omaha Steaks has been bringing people together for over 100 years. Enjoy family, enjoy friends, enjoy the best steak of your life.